Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. I'm Sarah Martin with The Contoured Chemist. If you are new here, welcome. I am Sarah, I'm a former organic chemist turned beauty educator. So I will teach you all the things when it comes to skin and makeup tips and tricks. That is my jam. So welcome. Today is going to be all about skincare and it's gonna be a great video for either if you're brand new to getting a regimen started, or if you're seasoned skincare pro, and maybe you're not getting the results you want, this is a no fail way to make sure you have a very balanced regimen. It's something I've been doing for years, and now it's a TikTok trend and it's a new term. And so I figured I'm gonna tell you all about skin cycling today and then sharing all of my skincare favorites, of course, along the way. So if you wanna check it out, please keep watching. Be sure to like and subscribe and thank you for being here. All right, friends, so to start today's video, I have to tell you about one of my very favorite products of all time when it comes to skincare and my attempt to age backwards. <laughs> so a couple of weeks ago, I was traveling for business and obviously it was out of state. I couldn't pack this with me. I, it was a saint event and we had pictures every day and I will not forget waking up one morning and being like, oh my gosh, how am I going to fix my face? Because this is what I look like, okay? Mostly I had these crazy vertical lines like in my chin and you guys, all it was was sleep wrinkles, okay? I have been so used to using my Sleep and Glow pillow. The Omnia pillow from Sleep and Glow is my ride or die holy grail. In order to prevent wrinkles that are easily preventable. Today's video is sponsored by Sleep and Glow. You guys, it's like I don't even realize how bad they truly can be until I'm traveling and sleeping on, we are in an Airbnb. Just normal pillows that I'm like, <laughs> I wish I could fit this in my suitcase. You don't know, sleep wrinkles are normally vertical, whereas expression wrinkles from smiling, laughing, I, I could care less if I have expression wrinkles. To me, that just shows that I live a happy life. But avoiding these weird vertical lines is totally preventable by not smashing your face into a pillow. And if you are a side sleeper like me, then you know what I'm talking about. And it's inevitable that you're going to wake up with lines. And sleep wrinkles last on your face far longer. than gets deformed there for hours. If you don't know, I originally started using this pillow to prevent my lashes from coming off in the middle of the night. Now, I could probably sleep on my face and I have good enough application with my lashes that they don't move. But the cool thing about this pillow is when you are sleeping on your side, look at this, it's got space in between your face. So your face is never smashed, like it never even is against the pillow. So you can still be a side sleeper like I am and you're never gonna create those vertical lines in your face. And I find over time, I sleep actually far better with one of these pillows. Like anything, it might take you a little bit of adjustment if you're always used to smashing your face into a pillow, but now I sleep better. This pillow is actually developed by orthopedists, so it will align your spine and you will sleep better as well. This pillow basically pays for itself. One pillow is far less, I probably less than half the price of one time ever getting Botox. And if you don't know, Botox wears off in like two to three months. It doesn't last very long. Have I tried it? Of course, I've tried everything, but I haven't had Botox in probably over a year. And to me, it's just not worth it when I can easily prevent it by just using my new favorite pillow. The cool thing is they even have a 30 night sleep trial guarantee. So you can try it, see if you like it, see if you can notice the difference in your skin. I know I could right away. And if you're a lash fi lover like me, 
you will enjoy that added bonus as so, well. I will insert here, I have a discount code for you guys and my link will be in the Dropbox below the video if you need to check it out. Um, the Omnia by Sleep and Glow is my favorite of all of theirs. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and take you back to my bathroom so I can show you all of my favorite products. Okay, friends, so we're talking skin cycling today. Now, skin cycling is actually a term coined by Dr. Whitney Bowe, but it is not new information. It just went viral on TikTok. It's one of the best things to ever go viral on TikTok, in my opinion, because it actually works and it works super well. So I've been doing this for years without really having a name. And I tend to say with a lot of things, I'm like, ease your way into it. Pay attention to your skin, add in things slowly as you're adjusted. This takes out all of the questions about whether you're going to cause inflammation or damage your skin's barrier function by just keeping it simple and following the steps every night. So it consists of, I'm gonna say five things, all right? Number one, night one. Now this is purely a PM nighttime regimen, okay? so. Night one is the exfoliation night. Night two is your retinoid. So retinol, vitamin A, vitamin A derivative, whatever you're gonna use. Night three is your recovery or your rest night. Then you're gonna have another recovery night and then you're gonna repeat, which means you're just gonna go back and exfoliate again and start it again. Now there are some different um, alterations depending on your skin type. So I'll get there and that you can easily adjust depending on if you have rosacea like me or acne prone skin, you might have to adjust those a little bit. But for the most part, that is a skin cycle. The reason why skin cycling is so effective is because you are introducing actives at a amazing rate, which in turn is what boosts your skin cell turnover, okay? That is what slows down as we get older. Every year it slowly gets slower and you have to boost that. You have to keep that moving. That is what is going to age you backwards um, and give you that youthful looking skin and see improvements uh, in your skin and not just stay the same. So if you've been doing the same regimen for a while now and you're not seeing results from it, I urge you to try skin cycling. You might not have to do anything different as far as the products you're using, but it might just be when you're using them. So we are boosting our skin cell turnover while keeping your barrier intact. And I feel like that is the biggest difference is that a lot of people or like, I'm gonna start a skincare regimen and they get all of these products and they're using them at different times and they're using things together that they shouldn't be. And they think they're doing really good things for their skin, but in turn, they're actually damaging their barrier function. Barrier is everything when it comes to skincare. As soon as that gets damaged or compromised, that's when you're gonna see texture on the skin, dry patches increased redness, inflammation, which in turn can create more acne, all of those things. If your skin's barrier is compromised, you're never going to see the results you want. So those recovery nights built in are gold. And I've always done that and put my own kind of little spin on it, but I will show you what I mean by that. So we're going to start with night one and I'm going to go through what that regimen would look like and show you my favorites. Now, these are just ones that I have tried. There are a gazillion products on the market. So these are just things that I've tried and I do love. And I'll tell you the reasons why I do love them or who they're best for because products aren't all created equal because all of our skin is not equal and everyone has different concerns, skin types, sensitivities, all of those things. And obviously I have not tried every product on the market. I wish, I love, love testing products, but alas, I only have so much money and time in the day, right? Okay, so 
Exfoliation night, night number one. This is a chemical exfoliator, which I know sounds scary. I promise it's not. It just means it's not a physical exfoliator, no harsh scrubbies, no physical manual exfoliation in order to um, get that skin cell turnover, okay? So we are breaking the bonds of between our skin cells by using an acid that is gonna in turn help on night two. Okay. There are a lot of different chemical exfoliators on the market. I would say you are unsure of what you should start with. I would start with lactic acid. Lactic acid is the most gentle. It's actually what's in all of our Saint skincare because it is derived from milk. Okay. But you're gonna want to use this in a form that's not washed off. There so are many different forms as well, from toners to actual treatments to serums to pads, okay? And I've tried them all and I like them all for different reasons. And I'll be honest, one week from the next, I tend to not use the same product every time. So this is how I assess what I like and don't like between so many products is by using one one week, I use something else the next week, and I do, I still pay attention to my skin and what it looks like on that second day. So, one of my favorites, I've been telling everyone about for years, it is good for mature skin, I'd say, if you don't have super sensitive skin, and I wouldn't, I say if you're dry, this particular formulation might not be your best. Glycolic acid is the strongest. This one isn't really formulated to hydrate your skin or anything in the same, at the same time, in my opinion. So I do notice um, I can only use this in this order. If I try to use this multiple days in a row, my skin will start peeling and start getting dry. So with this skin cycling process, I could use this no problem every single time. But just know, any time during this, if you notice something like that, that means something is causing you irritation and all you have to do is add in another recovery day. Okay? Alcoholic acid is always a good choice. In fact, everything I look for, I usually look to make sure glycolic acid is in it and even high up on that ingredient deck. So these I do really love. I've show, shared these before, they're the Dr. Denise um, advanced firming facial pads. So this one is just in a pad form. You don't have to get a cotton round wet with the toner. You can just rub this all over your face. But this one is formulated with other things that will actually hydrate the skin. So this one isn't as drying. It has things like aloe and glycerin to actually help calm the skin as well. So this one would be a little bit better. This is probably why I prefer this one over this one, it is gentler. The next couple are really famous ones. They have cult followings. They are loved by many. Um, I don't use this a whole lot, which is why I just have the trial size, um, but it is amazing for acne prone skin, okay? If you have acne prone skin or oily skin, you truly have to look out for the ingredient salicylic acid. That is a BHA. Glycolic is an AHA, okay? So a lot of products you'll see have both in them, which are also great, but if you don't have salicylic acid and you have acne prone skin, you're never gonna actually clean out the pore. So they work different, different AHAs work differently than BHAs, and BHAs are actually what goes down to the pore and cleans out and keeps your pores clear. Okay, so Paula's Choice Exfoliate, this is the 2% BHA liquid exfoliant. Again, it's used like a toner, it's a liquid, and you would put it all over. It is extremely good. I tend to grab this if I'm breaking out, which happens one time of the month. This is what I go for. Now this one is much more intense. I would say I would limit this to once a week, but some people like to use more of a treatment. Um, say you're doing your skin cycling and then just one week you feel like you are more flaky or dry and you just need to really get off that top layer of skin, I'd say instead of waiting to a recovery day, if you need to exfoliate, just drop a treatment in on your exfoliation day instead of your normal exfoliator. Does that make sense? So here's two that I like. This is the Kate Somerville Exfolicate. 
okay? If you have sensitive skin or rosacea like me, they actually have a less intense version called, what is it called? It's called Exfolicate Gentle, okay? The gentler one. For years, I used to consider this a scrub, but I truly don't. If you look at the ingredients, it's acids. Um, it does have some silica particles, which can give a little bit of a gritty feeling, um, but you don't necessarily have to sit there and rub it all over your face. Even if you just put a thin layer all over the face and give it a few minutes and then rinse it off, you're gonna get all of the benefits of that. Number one ingredient is after water is lactic acid. And then it has enzymes. So things like papaya extract are other forms of exfoliators. <clears throat> Fruit extracts just are more gentle than acids. Okay. This one also has salicylic, so this is great for breaking out. And pumpkin extract, you'll see pumpkin on a lot of things that are exfoliating. So this is one of my favorites. Um, it's the Dermatology Pumpkin Enzyme Mask. So pumpkin is the enzyme. This is actually really exfoliating as well. Now this one does have like chunks of pumpkin in it. I don't feel like it's really a physical exfoliator because I just tend to put it all over and kind of let it do its job. These are two of my favorite treatments. You guys probably know my love for the Ordinary Toning Solution. I don't recommend this if you have never exfoliated with an acid before. This is a 30% AHA and then 2% BHA. It's really what I use when my skin just is, needs a complete overhaul. <laughs> and I will use that and I'll take all the dead skin off. So just know that the first time you use it, I recommend just leaving it on a couple minutes and slowly work your way up to eight to 10 minutes. And then last but not least, and probably one of the easiest things to do is because I'm a serum junkie, is using a serum. And I feel like serums are even gentler than using a toning and definitely more gentle than using um, some kind of treatment. But because they're formulated in different ways and they have more hydration as well, you can easily look for ones that oh. have AHAs and BHAs. Um, they do double duty. Like um, these are my favorite for getting that kind of instantaneous glow. So this one's Dr. Denise, Dennis Gross Alpha Beta Pore Perfecting and Refining Serum. If you have issues with pores, the best way is to make sure you are always using that salicylic acid, something with BHAs in them, to keep your pores clear. No way to physically shrink pores, but you can give the appearance that pores are smaller by keeping them cleaned out. And then this is the Herbivore Prism. Again, this is 12% AHA, 3% BHA. Both of these are really great serums that you can cleanse, apply, and then moisturize. So the cool thing about skin cycling as, is that your nightly routine is not this big drawn out 10 step regimen. It's extremely simple and you just are doing a nice rotation and including everything you need within a full week. Yep. You always clean your skin Get into cleanser options um, on the recovery phase, but gentle cleanser, then you can either use your toning solution, a serum, or do a treatment, wash it off. If you're doing a toner or a serum, obviously you don't wash those off, but then you would just lock it in and moisturize because again, acids can be drying. Moisturize with a good nighttime moisturizer, something that is thicker, heavier, a rich moisturizer, something that's not just gonna kind of looking for a thin consistency here. The thicker, the better. And that's my strategy with all nighttime moisture. I don't ever use a thin moisturizer at night. And if I do, then I would always top it with a thicker one. <laughs> Sometimes I try new ones and I'm like, I can just tell by now by feeling them. I'm like, there's no way this is gonna keep the moisture in my skin all night. I'm gonna wake up dry, so loaded up with another one on top and I'm golden. If you don't go to bed looking like a glazed donut, did you even do your skincare routine? That is my motto, that is so true. All right, night number two, retinoids. If you don't know what a retinoid is, it is the mo most highly researched ingredient in the skincare industry and has shown more evidence than anything else 
to do the most it possibly can when it comes to your skin. That means is that retinoids do everything from anti-aging, helping fine lines, wrinkles, boosting collagen, helping with hyperpigmentation, acne, scarring, name it, it does it. It's like the gold standard of skincare. So if you haven't introduced a retinoid yet, most likely it's probably because you've heard horror stories about how um, sensitive your skin could get, how dry and flaky and red and inflamed. And if you use this method, I guarantee you, you will never have those issues. Because the number one reason why people have that is because they're not taught how to introduce it properly or steps to take in order to get it to not irritate their skin. It increases skin cell turnover better than anything. So we just primed our skin on night one. We removed or we loosened up that dead skin cells. Now that retinol is going to be able to do its job more effectively and do the most good. And since this is the number one ingredient, we really wanna make sure it's doing its job. Everything, we're gonna start with cleansing and then we're going to do an extra step if you are new to a retinoid or you've tried one and you have any kind of irritation. Okay, so I'm gonna show you the best way to avoid it. Um, now, first thing you wanna do is you wanna find a moisturizer that is, like I was just saying, thinner. <laughs> But right. normally you don't want to use a thin moisturizer at night. Here's the time you do. So you want to find a more a thinner moisturizer, preferably maybe something even fragrance free, something lighter that is not too thick that will cause milia around your eyes. I actually got recently got asked how you can get rid of milia. There's really there's only two ways, and that is using a really gentle acid like we just talked about. Um, which is hard around your eyes, so you'd probably want to use some kind of serum. Then a retinoid, which again, both of those just increase skin cell turnover and will help kind of get rid of that milia faster. Otherwise, the only way to truly get rid of it is to going to the dermatologist and having them extracted. Don't try to do it yourself. Um, I personally would look for an eye cream with retinol in it. Use a serum closer to my lash line and then use that kind of eye cream okay the number one reason why people get milia is using too thick rich of products near their eyes okay our under eyes and even above our eyes is the thinnest skin. it is completely different than the skin on the rest of our face and so we're more prone to kind of clogging those areas so milia are those little they almost look like chicken skin i tend to have a little bit um but they will grow and they will actually get more it look like you have white bumps there that again you would have to extract so if you ever see that they're starting to form whatever you're doing make sure you are keeping your rich moisturizer not past this orbital bone naturally the products you put on your skin will migrate up that area so the closer you get to here the more they can get on your Which eyes. Why this next thing I wish I would have done before I started my skincare journey, um, because one of the things that can happen when you're starting skin cycling, you can develop eye dermatitis, which is what I developed. It took me a long time to kind of figure it out and to get it treated, and it's not fun. So it, eye dermatitis is just when your eyelid or this area around your eye gets red, inflamed, swells, um, starts peeling profusely. It was not a pretty look and it was extremely annoying because I couldn't figure out what was doing it. And it, w it turned out to be a certain product I was using that created it, but things like a retinoid that your skin's not used to can migrate up to your eye and cause excess irritation. So you always wanna make sure you do this next step with a thin moisturizer. So. Look for something that is not super thick, okay? La Roche-Posay has a thing with this tall, I can't say, I can't pronounce anything French, guys. This is always amazing. It's my favorite cleanser as well, I'll show you. Double Repair Face Moisturizer. Um, I also like this Youth to the People. It is the Air Whip. So things that are nice and thin and almost like 
feel like a gel formulation are always good options because you know they're going to not be too occlusive on this skin. And you also can just use your favorite eye product. So I finally found one. Not irritate my eye dermatitis after years of trying to find an eye cream that wasn't too occlusive, that caused me milia, and wasn't sensitizing that actually caused my dermatitis to get inflamed again. Dr. Loretta is my favorite, so this is a 360 you can put around your entire eye. That will kind of give a barrier around your eye so that you don't have too much of your retinoid creep up into your eye area. But truthfully, eye creams are one of those things that you hear a lot of people recommend and you don't necessarily need one, okay? A lot of moisturizers on the market can do the same thing. That is the only thing that you really gotta look out for is that it's not too heavy to cause milia, okay? But a lot of eye creams are simply the same formulation as the larger moisturizer. They're just in smaller packaging and they charge more per ounce, okay? So know that unless you're trying to do something, I love that one because it tightens and my eyelids are a huge issue for me. So that most moisturizers aren't gonna do. I look for one specifically that I can put around my entire orbital bone, which not all of them can go on the eyelid. But say one day I don't have it, whatever, or you don't have one you like, take a thinner moisturizer and apply it around the eye area. Smile lines. And marionette lines okay some people if you have excess irritation I tend to get or even right here in the nose crease well these are all areas of our face that have different skin and have more irritation with retinoids okay so if you are brand new and you've never used one before this is almost like giving you a, your skin a barrier so that when you put the retinoid on your face, it's gonna be diluted in those areas. It's not gonna be as concentrated and it's not gonna be able to, to cause those areas to dry out as much, start flaking or red, all those things. Oh, I almost forgot an area. And your neck. Our neck is also an area and our skin is different, okay? So if you've noticed your neck is a little bit sensitive as well, just put a little bit down your neck. Then you can go in with your retinol. Thin layer and all those places can really help you avoid that crazy sensitive adjustment phase and allow you to use your retinoid every four days when you're starting out. Okay, so I always recommend starting it and you can even give yourself an extra recovery day. Just do it once a week if your skin is very sensitive, but Otherwise, every four days, and you can slowly add in more, add in an extra recovery day if you need one. Okay, when it comes to your retinoid, less is more, okay? And when somebody says a pea size amount, that is literally all you need. And I feel like sometimes people are like, well, I don't know, how do you do that? This isn't technically my retinoid, but just so I can show you for demonstration sake. Pea size dot on the back of your hand, and then you're gonna go in with your retinoid and you're gonna dot it all over your face, okay? Not going past that orbital bone. You can go exactly where you just moisturized because you do have a barrier there. And this is how you can easily distribute your pea size equally all over and then just rub it in like normal. Now, I also recommend doing it down the neck, even your chest, because again, this area, sometimes we forget about, we don't sunscreen enough, and we actually get more sun damage and especially hyperpigmentation like me in those areas than our face that we tend to sunscreen every day. Okay, so when it comes to your retinoid, there are over-the-counter retinols, 
There are retinols, which is my personal favorite, and then there's prescription strength, okay? I've done videos kind of breaking down the entire um, of what a retinoid is from least strong to most strong. Uh, tretinoin is the one that is the strongest. This is prescription strength. I'll be honest, guys, it's not my favorite, and I'll explain why in a minute. Um, because of my rosacea, I'll kind of explain how you can adjust this regimen. If you do have rosacea, I wouldn't recommend starting with, well, I wouldn't recommend starting with this for anyone. I always recommend starting with from over-the-counter retinol to a retinol. Um, retinols are my personal favorite. They actually tend to give less irritation than even the over-the-counter retinols, but they're stronger, okay? So my two favorites um, is this Red Advance by Obagi Medical, and you'll see that these are usually yellow in color. And I've been testing this Youth to the People Retinol, and this one's got niacinamide in it as well. I love the color of this yellow formulation. This will tell you it's a retinol. Okay. So those amounts, dot them all over the face, down the neck, chest. I always rub any excess product, no matter what I'm doing, what I'm using, into the back of my hands, because again, we age there fast. Now, since retinols tend to be a little bit more drying, because again, they're really speeding up that skin cell turnover, again, follow with a rich moisturizer. I'll share my favorites here in a second. All right, so we made it to night three. This is our recovery night or our rest night, whatever you wanna call it. This is where we really are gonna hone in on those ingredients that help our skin's barrier function. This is where we kind of repair, rest, and I like to say hydrate the skin. I'm gonna go over more about cleansers, moisturizers in this night so you guys can see some of my favorites. Okay, so no matter the night, if I am wearing makeup or wore sunscreen, which pretty much is every single day of my life, I double cleanse, okay? Two of the best options for double cleansing are a micellar water, Remove. makeup with something like this. This is the Ultra from La Roche Posay. And then I like on, so on a normal day, I tend to use micellar water if I'm not wearing makeup. But I wear sunscreen every day, not even if I don't leave the house, like I've got sunscreen on right now. I always wear sunscreen. Sunscreens can be harder to move, remove, and of course they can lead to breakouts. So double cleanse to remove that sunscreen. If I'm wearing makeup or heavy makeup, I'm going to be using an oil or a balm. And these are really great because they break up that makeup. They are known for, for melting off your makeup. If you were ever in chemistry like me, you remember like dissolves like. These are oils. They really will kind of dissolve all that oil on your skin, all of your makeup, and they take it all the off. The Naturium one is really awesome. Um, it's a cleansing oil. Gel to oil, I guess you could say. Is that what they call it? Yeah. It kind of becomes an oil once you put it in your hands. This one, you remember what papaya does? The Glow Recipe Papaya Enzyme, or Papaya Sorbet Enzyme Cleansing Balm. This one is more exfoliating. So if I feel like I need extra exfoliation that day and I'm wearing makeup, I just pull this one and that is my first step. We've removed our sunscreen or, and or makeup. Um, gentle cleanser. I have a lot of favorites, but I have been using this one. It has been my ride or die for five years now and it did wonders for my skin. And of course, I'm talking about the Saint Cleanser. Used to be called the Milk Cleanser. Now it's just called the Saint Cleanser and it's in gray packaging. It is a lactic acid actually based cleanser, but it is extremely gentle. I consider it really good for dry, normal, and especially mature skin because it will kind of gently exfoliate at the same time. But since it's a milk-based cleanser, it doesn't suds up and really pull out too much excess oil. So it in turn is super hydrating 
and then balancing because pH is everything when it comes to cleansers and it's super balancing for your skin type. I used to be oily combination and now my skin is completely normal and I say it's all to the Saint Sin skincare system. I also know because I'm a skincare junkie and a chemist that no one product will work for everyone in the world because we all have very different skin. I'm always experimenting and trying new things. And I would say this is probably my, my second favorite cleanser of all time. And it does actually remind me a lot of the Saint cleanser because it does not suds. It's extremely gentle, water-based, not but irritating, fragrance-free, and it will totally remove any kind of excess oil that something like this would leave on the skin, which is why we always double cleanse. I actually originally bought this for my husband who has psori psoriasis, I think it's psoriasis on his face. And this completely helped that for him as well. Um, and then I stole it. So this is, the, again, I can't pronounce it. Tolerate, tolerate, anybody take French? Um, I literally have a big bottle over there and then this one stays over here next to me because I needed two because he kept stealing it. It's extremely gentle, non-sudsing, non-stripping. If you're washing your face and your skin feels tight, it's too harsh for you for a daily cleanser. Now this one is one that when, if I'm ever not feeling dry, more on the oilier side, breaking out, I tend to like this. Now this one does strip my skin slightly more because it's a sudsing cleanser, but I do really like this one. This is the Kale and Green Tea Spinach Vitamin Superfood Cleanser from Youth to the People. So this one does suds. It is extremely good though if you have more oily or acne prone skin while not being necessarily a targeted acne cleanser, like some are that have salicylic acid, but a gentle cleanser so that you can make sure your skin is staying balanced. A lot of the ones that are formulated just for acne can be very stripping if you're using them day after day and you need more balance or you need more hydration. Salicylic acid can be drying as well. It's an acid, okay? okay. so. Let's get to the nitty gritty of the recovery day. In my opinion, do so many different things in this place, but I would say you need to focus on hydrating the skin after doing two days where you were literally taking off the top layer of skin and then adding a retinoid, which again is going to increase cell turnover. You really wanna make sure you're adding back in any hydration that your skin lost those first two days and then recovery. Recovery when it comes to skincare is all in barrier specific ingredients. So you wanna be looking out for mainly ingredients. I don't care if you use any of the same stuff I do, but look for it in the ingredients, ceramides, glycerin, hyaluronic acid is going to hydrate. Obviously there's many, many more, but ceramides and glycerin are really gonna repair the most. So. While your skin is still damp, or you can use some kind of spring water, because I always forget and I towel dry, and then I'm like, shoot, I gotta apply my hyaluronic. Hyaluronic acid, if you don't know, always has to be applied to damp skin. Hyaluronic acid actually will pull water to it. So if you are applying it to dry skin, where's it gonna pull from? It's gonna either pull it from the environment or from within your skin and it can actually dry out your skin, okay? But it wants water. If your skin is wet, you're gonna get the most hydration. So if you forget and you dry your skin, I like to use just a thermal water. Um, both of these are really good. It's just spray the spring water, get your skin damp, and then you can apply your hyaluronic, okay? So this is one of my favorite hyaluronics ever. This is the, the La Roche-Posay Hyalu B5, pure hyaluronic acid. This one is really good. I've been loving this Youth to the People Triple Peptide and Cactus Oasis Serum. This is a hyaluronic as well with added peptides. I would say I use these interchangeably depending on the day. And you'll notice a lot of my recovery products have peptides in them. 
Peptides are what will plump the skin and help with anti-aging wrinkles, fine lines. Anytime you can throw them in there, in my opinion, they're great. Um, another one I've been using for years is the Cause de Baja. This is a peptide serum, which again, also has hyaluronic acid in it. You'll notice that a lot of serums on the market have hyaluronic. You don't necessarily need one just by itself. So if your recovery day, if you're truly wanting to just hydrate and repair, then you can look for something with hyaluronic, glycerin, and ceramides in it have one step and then just moisturize to lock it in. That is gonna be a very simple regimen, okay? So you don't necessarily have to have something different for every step, but ingredients wise, look out for something with hyaluronic. It's not hard to find because a lot of stuff has it in there because it is well loved. And I forgot to mention niacinamide is also an ingredient that I look for that's in a lot of these things. So if you guys have been around for a while, you know one of my favorite products is this snail essence, the snail mucin. I love it. I consider this probably my number one skin barrier product that to me, I can tell a huge difference. The cool thing about snail mucin is that it actually naturally has all of these ingredients in it from ceramides to niacinamide. And so it has everything. So to me, I like to kind of lock in my hyaluronic with this and then I will use my moisturizer and I'm good. I use this in the morning. I use this probably every single time I do any of these regimens, I will add this in to lock in whatever I just used. But it's just a personal favorite. If, you have, if you're wanting to keep it simple and quick as possible, then you don't need to add extra steps. Just keep what you need. I just enjoy this and I enjoy what it does for my skin. Okay, so let's talk about some night creams. Um, I have, of course, shared my two personal favorites that I consider rich moisturizers time and time again. There are a couple that I feel like maybe aren't rich enough for my skin personally because I am, I feel like as I age every year, I'm getting a little bit drier than I used to be. And so, they don't completely hit the mark for me as far as richness, but I'll be honest, a lot of times I will put these on and then I will put one of these next ones on over it, like I said before. And so both of these are really great anti-aging night creams, okay? So the Dermatology Peptide Night Cream, this one's really good. It is, it's not that it's not thick, it's just I think for years I'm used to a thicker consistency. I want to wake up and still be super glowy and hydrated. Personally, I feel like I wake up just with my skin looking normal when I use something this light. I know I'm a little crazy, but I'm a little picky when it comes to my moisturizer. And then uh, this is a brand new product from you to the people. It's the Polypeptide 121 Future Cream. Strengthens, firms, and moisturizes. This has got really cool technology. Again, it's not that it's not thick because it it is. Um, I just like a little thicker. So I sometimes both of these are loaded with peptides. Peptides are amazing for anti-aging, like I just said. So I will load on some peptides and then I'll really lock it in. And I feel like these two, I see the most results from as far as repairing my skin overnight and during recovery time, for sure. Um, when I need the ultimate hydration, I'm always grabbing the Saint Cream or the Dew Cream, okay? So this one is extremely rich and I consider it like the epitome of a recovery cream because it's so rich in ceramides and all the things that ingredients that we're supposed to be using on this night, this dew cream has it. It is very thick, luxurious, fragrance-free. It's, it's amazing. It is one of my very favorites. I never thought I'd be able to find anything that rivaled my Saint Cream, but this is so The Saint Cream does have lactic acid, like I said before, it does. So it does gently exfoliate overnight. It does even have a very small amount of retinol derivative as well. 
so that, which is vitamin A. So it can um, help a little bit more skin cell turnover. For me, I use it perfectly fine with everything and I don't notice any kind of irritation. This all, this in fact has healed me many a times from some skincare woes when I damaged my skin's barrier and left me red and inflamed or broken out in rashes when I've had reactions to things. And this was the only thing at the time that completely took it away. So to me, this is extremely reparative, but just know that it does have more ingredients that are gonna help with that, with our entire process, which is skin cell turner. But it is going to balance your pH and moisturize like no other. Anyone who's tried this knows that it's, it's extremely moisturizing. In fact, I truly don't recommend this during the day unless you have extremely dry skin. You don't need it. Um, and it does have silicones if you're a Saint 3D user. So I wouldn't recommend it under the makeup anyway. But for all of you 3D wearers, know that your skincare regimen, if you wanna take your makeup to the next level, it starts with this. If you can start the skincare cycling, you will notice the biggest difference in the way the makeup sits on your skin, truly. Only so much colors and techniques can do. Your skin is your canvas, right? Okay, so say you really love one of these, you moisturize and you're like, well, I'm gonna need a little bit more hydration. Here's where you can, in the very last step of your routine, you can introduce an oil or you can slug you guys know what that means. So one of my favorite things to do is using an oil. There's a lot of different oils on the market. I would say you can easily do a Google search and find the best facial oil for whatever you're wanting it to do. If you're wanting hydration only, squalene. If you want something that's going to do other benefits, my favorite personally is rosehip seed oil. It's great for hyperpigmentation, anti-aging, and it totally locks in all of that moisture for me as well. So this is usually my go-to. I've tried everything from vitamin E to argan. There's no wrong choice. It's just kind of like trying things and seeing what you like and what you prefer and what your skin prefers. If you don't know what slugging is, um, slugging means that you're taking some kind of occlusive and you're putting a very small amount, again, pea size, over your entire face as your last step in your regimen. Now, you can use anything from Vaseline to CeraVe to Aquaphor, okay? It is Latum, okay? Literally the number one ingredient in our makeup in 3D foundation is Petrolatum. I don't find I have to do this very often because literally every day I wear makeup, I'm getting the same benefits as slugging. And so slugging, all it is, it means that you are putting an occlusive agent on your skin so that you have no transepidermal water loss overnight. T-E-W-L, that just means all of that. Normally, if you were to not lock in all of this, you're gonna lose water through your skin as you sleep. Same thing during the day, you lose, you lose a lot, which is why foundations tend to dry, be drying and cracking on most people's skin. But if you've worn our creams, you know that your skin will actually hydrate over time, and it's because the creams, anything with petrolatum, it's a skin protectant. It will hold moisture in, which in turn hydrates your skin over time, and it locks in all of that water loss. It's incredible. So if you're dry in the winter, I tend to do this just when needed. I honestly don't recommend it if you have acne prone skin, because something like this over time can break you out depending on what you're using or how much you're using over your skincare. But just know that it is an option in, I would say, one or the other oil or slugging. Or um, another thing is using a sleeping mask. It is the same general premise of slugging. It's just using a different kind of product. So one of my ride or dies first I ever tried was the Glow Recipe Watermelon Glow Sleeping Mask. These are more like just, they create almost like a, this one is more of a jelly-like formulation. It's more like a jelly that forms this film kind of over your skin to where you're not gonna lose water. 
Um, it's like same exact thing. You're holding in the, anything you've just put on your skin, you're holding it in overnight. So I recently got the some masks from Youth to the People and this is the Superberry Hydrate Glow Dream Mask. I really like this one because it isn't, it doesn't create a film. It just feels like you put a moisturizer on and the next morning I'm, I, it's not like peeling or anything weird, but this one is high, uh, hyaluronic acid, squalane, even got vitamin C in it. And again, it's the same thing. It's an overnight mask, but it's more of a cream formulation. Um, both of those are going to lock in the hydration, which is the purpose of using an overnight mask. Okay. So the night after that is another recovery night. You can either repeat the steps or you can do what I do a lot of times and I call it a treatment night. So this can be right after your retinoid night or on that second recovery night, or you can add in another recovery after this one and do three days of recovery, which is kind of what I do, which I'll share more. I like to add in a treatment night because I truly have a lot going on that I want to work on my skin. I know that those acids and retinoids are gonna do a lot of good for my skin, but depending on what my skin is doing at the moment, again, I always listen to my skin, I might want to tackle hyperpigmentation or more on anti-aging. Um, depending on how my skin feels, I might focus more on recovery than just a hyaluronic acid serum and really kind of use something to soothe my skin barrier even more so. I wanted to give, go through some of my favorite options. First, let's go via just skin soothing general repair. Another product I'm obsessed with from this line, this is the Dew Deliverance Serum. I'll be honest, when I travel, this is the only serum I take. This is the one thing I feel like I can use morning and night and it will address everything. It calms the skin, it addresses fine lines, hydration, irritation, it has niacinamide in it to even out tone and texture. I feel like this is one of the best serums on the market. It truly is one of those all encompassing. So if you're looking for something that just got it all, I'm obsessed with this one. It's so good. To just kind of soothe the skin. You can look for something like with got avocado in it. I really do like the Glow Recipe Avocado Re Ceramide Recovery Serum. This one is rich in ceramides, which again is something that we look for with recovery. And one of my favorite, and if you are a skincare junkie like me, I'm sure you've heard it talked about a million times. I don't know how to pronounce it. Cicaplast Balm B5 by La Roche-Posay. So this is considered a soothing, therapeutic, multi-purpose cream, okay? If you really dive deep into the ingredients, it's a dimethicone skin protectant temporarily protects and revives chapped, cracked, chafed skin. But it's got B5, shea butter, all these great ingredients. And they actually just reformulated it with even better ingredients for many different purposes. But this is kind of a holy grail in the skincare world for repairing your skin's barrier. The thing is you don't wanna use it necessarily like a nighttime moisturizer. You wanna use it almost like a retinoid in the fact you need a pea size amount. You wanna cleanse your skin, use any kind of whatever you're using, treatments, whatever, serums, and then you wanna put on about a pea size amount all over your face and then lock it in with your nighttime moisturizer. This baby will repair the most irritated of skin overnight. It's amazing. A lot of people use this nightly, just to keep their skin's barrier intact at all times. I would say if that's something you struggle with, I highly recommend it. I tend to use it, I even use this, if my eye dermatitis flares up, I will put it on my eyes and literally hours later, my eyes are like healed and no longer burning. It's like the weirdest thing, super good, okay? That is kind of recovery, all my favorite recoveries. Say I just want to focus on anti-aging and I really want to just kind of like up the peptides, right? Really use all those high in peptide ingredients. Um, you can use the Hyaluronic that has peptides in it or you can use something that has it all in one bottle. The Dermatology Needless Serum really has so many amazing ingredients. Number one is niacinamide, 
hyaluronic acid. It's got copper. It's got ceramides. It's got glucosamine, um, panthenol. It's got everything from soothing to antioxidants to niacinamide hydrating. It really does have everything in one bottle. If you're wanting a one bottle to do all of that, this is a really great option. In fact, I need another bottle because I am completely out. So, another thing I ran out of, and I finally just got another bottle, and it's one of my favorite products of all time. It's the Ordinary's Buffet Plus Copper Peptides. If you've never researched how well copper is um, in the world of anti-aging, this is an amazing product to have in your arsenal for anti-aging purposes. I love to throw this, on, throw this in. I use this sometimes in the mornings and again at night as well. For sure on those nights I was focusing on anti-aging. Okay. Say you wanna do a targeted night um, treatment, something you have, whether we'll drop in a graphic of different skin concerns and ingredients you need to look for in order to address those concerns. Two of my concerns are rosacea and hyperpigmentation, which use very different kind of treatments. So it's something that I would definitely add this serum in to a recovery night and load up on products or just keep it simple and just use this one um, on a night where I'm doing barrier repair because rosacea a lot of times is all about re repairing the skin. So. This one is, I've shared before, the Rosaliac Intense. This one is for rosacea. I've noticed great results from it to kind of reduce that redness I have in my rosacea areas. Real quickly, I wanted to go over how you could adjust this skin cycle if you do struggle with really bad rosacea. Um, you probably need to tweak this. So, if you have sensitive, really sensitive skin or you struggle with reactive skin like I do, like you touch your face and it turns red for five minutes, um, you have reactive skin. My rosacea tends to get flared up sometimes. This is how I keep it in control. So, for number one, the exfoliation, you want to look for things that have less than 15% total acids which again is why this one may not be the best bet for me, but technically it is 7% solution. So look for things under 15%, things like, where did it go? This, this peel that are technically 32% acid, I noticed the next day, I'm very red. Like it will flame, inflame my rosacea greatly. So that is not something I can use on a daily basis. It is a once, a month type treatment for me. Okay. When it comes to the retinoid night, you want to, like I said before, you want to avoid prescription. I tried this, I tried working my way up to it for years and it just did not work well for me. I had so much irritation, I could never get past that adjustment phase whatsoever until I went back down and I went to a retinol and I have no irritation with this. I see great results and I would say rosacea. If rosacea is an issue for you, stick with a retinol or a retinal, which is a retinaldehyde. Um, they are less irritating and they're gonna be better for your skin. Much more gentle. And then you wanna add an extra recovery night, okay? So rosacea, literally is inflammation of the skin. You're gonna need an extra day of repair, which is what we're doing during those recovery nights. So I would say do one where you're using all of those great skin barrier ingredients, then maybe that next night you can use something like this or use this every single night and give yourself three nights. So instead of using an exfoliator every four days, it would be every five. Does that make sense? Okay, and so last but not least, the other night I like to target uh, hyperpigmentation. So I've always said hyperpigmentation is a beast because obviously years and years of damage is below the surface that you're not gonna see till years later. So there is loads of different products um, on the market 
for hyperpigmentation, but we're already doing two, actually three of the most important steps for preventing or getting rid of hyperpigmentation, and that is acids, using an acid exfoliator, using that retinoid, using sunscreen every morning. And so the other things is getting a pigment inhibitor. Um, and it's something you do wanna do morning and night, and that is what's gonna stop that pigment from ever reaching the surface of the skin. I tend to use this in the morning, so my alpha arbutin, again, something that's got hyaluronic already in it. And then on my treatment nights, I will sometimes use this with this. This is um, Brightening Serum by Barefaced, and it is got a lot of different pigment inhibitors. Kojic acid okay. has alpha arbutin, zalic acid, which is, again, something I sometimes use in the morning. Um, the key is with hyperpigmentation is that you have to use something like that all the time. Zamic acid is another good one. So, like I said, hyperpigmentation is a beast. Some nights I really target it. I'm not targeting it the night. I'm at least using it in the morning. So that brings me to morning routines because I know I'm going to get asked, well, what about all this stuff in the morning or how do you... Do you skin cycle in the morning? And no, mornings should be simple, easy, and just the same things every day. Of course, if there's something in here that is like a hyaluronic acid, you can use it, but it's not necessary every day for your morning routine. If you wanna just keep it simple, your morning routine is gonna stay the same, okay? That is cleanse the skin, use a vitamin C serum, and then moisturize and sunscreen. Sunscreen is always last, always, always last. Now, if you're like me and have really normal skin and you have a sunscreen, a lot of sunscreens on the market are really hydrating nowadays. Depends on which one you're using, obviously, um, and your skin type. You're finding that through the day you're not getting dry or feeling flaky or anything like that, and you're, you're just using a sunscreen in the morning to lock in your hydration, you're completely fine just using that. If you are feeling like you are, you need to add in an extra moisturizer before your sunscreen for that extra bit of hydration. And you'll quickly learn what your skin needs and what your skin might not need. And vitamin C's are a whole nother ball game. I've done videos over on Instagram if you wanna check them out. Um, some of my quick favorites, May Love the Glow Maker. Dermatology has the C, E, and F, which both of these are dupes for skin SkinCeuticals which is very pricey. I love the Nuco, which is a topical vitamin C that you can mix with any kind of serum. So this one does not go bad. Um, and I have been testing the new, the Beauty Stat, which is a really great formulating one. It is very strong. So it is a 20% vitamin C, pure ascorbic acid. I definitely say if you have sensitive skin like I do, this might not be your best choice. The kitty's talking. You wanna come say hi? Oh, dear's my baby. Can you say hi? You want some vitamin C? He's like, no. I wanna get up on the counter. What, what are you doing? Oh, here comes the other one. Anyway, it's strong. I can feel the tingling. I do have sensitive skin. I do have rosacea. But if you're looking for a really well formulated vitamin C, that's not gonna go bad and that you'll see the most results from, I would try it. Okay, and then last but not least, if you have acne prone skin, I went over some of the stuff that you could include, but how you should change your skin cycling, you need to go down to three days. So you're going to exfoliate, retinoid, recover, repeat, exfoliate, retinoid recovery. Like I said earlier, you definitely want to look for some kind of an exfoliant with salicylic acid. I would recommend something like this Paula's Choice. You really need to be able to clear out your pores so that you can constantly be cycling Getting and of active breakouts and, of, and again, clearing out ones that haven't come to the surface. Now, yet. on the other hand, different than my rosacea girls, if you have acne prone skin, you actually want to try to build up to a stronger retinoid. So I would say 0.1% retinol or get your prescription for tretinoin. Again, you wanna start with the lowest of tretinoin, which is 
0.025%, but that is gonna, again, help that skin cell turnover, help get rid of those active breakouts and purge your skin so you have less breakouts overall and clear up your skin. Okay, friends, that is everything when it comes to skin cycling and getting you on a new regimen to see your best skin yet healthy balance with a strong skin barrier seeing the results from that retinoid and exfoliation so we can all age backwards right i will link as many products as i can down in the drop box below the video if you are needing help have any questions comment below or don't hesitate to reach out to me um, my email is sarah at the i'm more than happy to help if you are a saint 3d wearer and you are questioning if you have a color issue or a skincare issue with your foundation and are curious to see you're needing a new color match or help troubleshooting I can help you out with that as well. My color match request is in the drop box below the video. You just fill that out. Let me know any colors you're using, any concerns you're having, and I will definitely be able to tell you if it is a color issue or a skincare issue. Another thanks to the sponsor of today's video, the Sleeping Glow Omnia Pillow. I love this bad boy. If you wanna check it out, there will be a discount code and a link down below so you can get one for yourself. As always, thank you guys so much for being here. I love you. See you next week.